Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Dampfast Reservoir. Now, this is my local venue, only a few minutes from my house, just on the outskirts of Sheffield. It's a fantastic venue, and I've spent more time here over the years of fishing, nearly 40 years of fishing, than anywhere else I can think of. What a beautiful place. So it's an absolute pleasure to come back and experience some fantastic fishing, skimmer fishing, and with a little bit of a twist as well, because we're on the quarry bank. And as you can see here, the water level is very low at the moment. It's very rare that this reservoir gets this low. Maybe once every five years it gets to this level. Um, and we're on the quarry bank, a notorious area of the lake called Windy Corner. Um, now, the interesting thing is, I'm fishing 11 metres out and it's 10 and a half metres deep. So today, what I want to do is I want to run through how I'm catching these fish in such a depth, the rigs that I'm using, but more importantly, the actual approach regarding how I'm feeding the peg, what ground bait I'm using, and just run through everything basically. But I'm having a fantastic day fishing. Let's crack on and catch some more fish. Right, let me talk to you about my plan, how I'm going to feed the peg. Now, for a start, today and recently as well, and a lot of the dynamite anglers have been using this whilst testing, I'm going to be using the new F1 Cool Water ground bait. Now, this is absolutely fantastic, not just for commercials, and that's one of the main reasons why we're here, is to show that this particular ground bait, along with nearly every dynamite product, catches every single species that's going on commercials and natural water. So we're at damp flask, 10 and a half metres depth of water, and we're going to be feeling this. It's a fantastic ground bait. It's full of attractants as well. So skimmers love it, absolutely love it. So I'm going to quickly show you how to mix it up. Basically, all I'm doing is two kilos of ground bait, adding loads of particles in it because I want those fish to hold in the peg for as long as possible. Maggots, worms, few pinkies, loads of sweet corn as well. So there's loads of colour on the bottom because of the depth of the water that I'm fishing in. I want the fish to actually pick out the particles in the ground bait. But the ground bait is the binder, the carrier that gets all those particles to the bottom and that will hold the fish in the swim for a long time. So. Two bags of ground bait, in we go. And I'm just gonna gradually add some water. Now I want it quite inert, so I want it quite damp. I don't want it dry because in this depth of water, I want that ground bait to get down and force those fish that are mid-depth to follow that bait down. I don't want them coming off the bottom. So, literally, I'm giving it a good old mix around. All mixed up now. I'm gonna leave that for about 10 minutes, riddle it, but you can see it's quite clumpy and that's exactly what I want, a nice dense mix. So I'm gonna riddle it and we're ready to get fishing. Right, let's talk about the feeding now. I've got the ground bait mixed up. I've riddled it as you can see here. Lovely, nice and fluffy, but it's really heavy. It's a really dense mixer. That's how I've, the beauty about any ground bait is depending on how much water you add to it, dictates how it ends up at the end. So I've added a lot, quite a lot of water to it, so it's dense, it binds. I want those balls to get down to the bottom, minimising any particles coming off them as it's falling through the depth of the water that we're fishing in at the moment. So for that reason, that's why I've done it quite damp. Now, within the ground bait, I'm adding a good helping of maggots, red and white maggots, worms, Chop worms and a good help in a sweet corn as well. Don't forget, in this depth of water, a lot of your bait gets lost. So 
you, you know, the other day when I was doing a feature on here, I fed so much bait because I reckon only 50% of it actually the fish get a chance to feed on. So that's the reason why you constantly got to keep feeding your bait, whether it's ground bait and particles, in order to attract fish into your swim in deep pegs. So as you can see there, absolutely rammed full of particles and that's really important. So I'm going to make the balls up now. So I could ball it I suppose, but this is the problem. That when you ball it in this depth of water, 10 and a half meters of water, it's a lot of water, it's very very deep water, the deepest I've ever fished in. This is the only place I've ever fished in plus six meters of water. Um, You've got to ensure that you know where that, kind of like roughly where that bait's going. So I'm cupping it in. I don't want to make any noise because that's going to deter uh, any pike coming into the swim. Obviously when, we, when you ball it, loads of disturbance and that attracts pike. So I want to minimise the chance of any predators coming into my peg. And also by actually cupping it in, he's making me consciously aware of where that bait's going on the bottom. I'm being more accurate. And also spending a bit of time making sure that the balls are completely round so they fall in a straighter line through the water. If I did them odd shapes, they'd wobble around as they walk, go through the water and they'd mostly go off course and I could be feeding underneath my pole tip initially, but they could be landing two, three, four, five metres past my pole tip because they're wobbling through the water. So things like that are really important to take into consideration on deep pegs. So I'm going to start off the peg with some big balls like so and I'm going to do some more as well but I'll just show you quickly I'm going to do nine nine or ten balls I'm going to initially feed and that's going to get my peg going and them skimmers are going to be on it straight away because they know that there's bait going in in this area it's been fished quite a lot recently these particular these particular two pegs so we're going to feed them get fish in and hopefully catch some skimmers now i put quite a lot of bait out at the start however it's not going to last for a long time so how do you actually top up a swim when you're fishing in this type of water well, to be honest with you, you've got a few options. But the problem is with today, it's a bright, sunny day. And when the water's clear and when the sun's shining on it, it's forcing the fish to come higher off the bottom because they're happier off the bottom. If it's an overcast, windy day, we wouldn't have a problem and we'd catch bigger skimmers. But today we're catching a lot of small skimmers because the fish are all through the water column. So what I want to do, although I've put a bed of ground bait down, and the fish are aware that there's bait down there. They, they're reluctant throughout the day, and this is what I found today, to constantly stay on the bottom and feed. They'll pick some bait up, and then they'll come off the bottom. And that is reflected upon the bites that I've been getting. I've been getting a lot of lift bites as well. So when it comes to topping my peg up, if I was to start feeding on a regular basis or loose feeding, that's going to make my peg even worse. I'm occasionally feeding a big ball. And that, in a way, what's happening is it's forcing those fish mid-water or three-quarters depth to re -get, regroup on the bottom where the bait's landing. So all I'm doing is, when it's time to top my peg up, which it is now, because the sample skimmers have obviously just decreased a little bit. I want to catch some bigger skimmers again. The same mix as what I've been using, the same particles. I don't need to add any more to them because there's so many particles within them. Just a slightly smaller ball than I was originally feeding at the start, initially when I fed my peg. One of them. But actually, I'm binding it really, really hard. I don't, don't want that break, to break down. I want it to get down to the bottom and hold in a ball on the bottom. So it's attracting the fish down there. But it's forcing them to take your hook bait quicker because that's not breaking down as quick. It will break down eventually, but it'll take a little bit longer than what I did initially when I formed the balls, when I fed my peg initially at the start of the, mat, uh, start of the session. So I'm just going to put this in now. And this should hopefully attract a few more fish, mid-depth, three-quarter depth, to follow this ball down and start feeding on the bottom again. 
The most important thing is keep your fishing simple. Think about your feeding because it's your feeding at the end of the day that's going to catch you those extra fish. So in this theory, rather than trying to come off the bottom and catch them off the bottom, which is a very difficult depth to fish in, you know, we're fishing in 10 and a half metres of depth. Let's keep it simple, catch those fish on the bottom. It's so much easier to actually target the fish and read your bites. So now what we're going to do, now I've fed that ball, and it often happens quite instantly, this, where you feed your ball, you go over the top, and you catch straight away because you're grouping the fish and concentrating the fish in the area where you want them to feed, which is where your bait's going. So let's swing this out. Now, when I'm placing the rig in, I'm using uh, quite a heavy float, which I'll talk about the float in a bit. I'll talk about the rig, the setup and everything, the hooks that I'm using, but I'm having to hold that rig out of the water, as you can see, for quite a long time. I need to be 100% sure that it's completely straight, that rig. And then once I know that it's completely straight, I'll very, very slowly lower it into the water. Now I'm fishing number eight, and as I explain, I'll explain with my rig, I want that rig to straighten quickly. Number eight droppers, as you can see, it's straight and straight away, and it's sitting nice and perk out of the surface, ready for me to read any indications that I get from a fish. And that's really important. I've got it dotted at a level where it enables me to read a bite going under or a lift bite. And that's really important to know the difference. So by using heavy shot means that if a fish decides to take that bait and come off the bottom, that bristle, there we go, it's going to go under in a sec. There we go. A nice little dim. Now, if I would have had too much bristle showing out, I don't think I'd have even seen that bite. And that's in, in 10 and a half metres of water. So it is quite important to get your rig right, and especially in these conditions where you're fishing for little skimmers that are on top of your bait they're picking up your maggots and they're not moving off. So it doesn't matter what depth you're fishing, you've got to make sure that you've plummeted up correctly and fished in the correct depth of water. So, let's take the hook out. Have a little skimmer like that, slip them in the net. Try and catch another one. All right, here we are. Yet another Sammy the skimmer. In you come, Sammy. Right, let me talk to you. Let me unhook this fantastic little skim. We've been catching these all day. Fantastic fishing. It's a venue that's just absolutely stuffed with everything, especially these. So let me just unhook him, slip him in the net, and let's talk about the rig that I'm using. Now, of course, because it's 10 and a half metres deep, I can't have an array of rigs. I can only, I can only have one rig. Um, so, I've got, let me just hook it up, and we'll start from the top. Start from the top. So, for a start, I'm using a reasonably soft elastic. I'm using an Elite Hollow, um, really, really soft, forgiving elastic, which is, let's say, a six hollow. Um, Main line I'm using Shimano Aspire Silk Shot 016. Now, I'm using quite a thin main line for obvious reasons, really. If you think about it, I'm fishing in really deep water. I want to minimize any water movement as far. I want to catch hold of that undertow, but if my main line's too thick, it's going to create too much drag and I'll end up having to use a bigger float than what I need. So, by using a thinner main line, just minimizes resistance and makes the rig and the presentation work better. And that's why I'm only using an 016 main line. I'm using a Sarfix 4 gram float. These are one of my old favourite floats, floats. I bet that's about 12 years old, that. Um, I used to use them a lot when I used to fish the Vaughan Canal in Holland. As you can see, it's a lovely pair body float. Quite a long uh, carbon stem. But it's a light float in weight. So that means it minimises resistance when I'm striking through the float, trying to get to the hook in the in the strike process. If I use a wire stem float, it's that, that extra weight that I've got to try and strike through to get to my hook. 
and it may lead to bumping fish and that's why I'm using this particular shape float as well. Nice tight shoulder there so when it has got a bit of undertow on the wind picks up and it starts towing through that shoulder allows me to hold against the float to prevent it pulling out of the water. Again nice long bristle as I've explained means I can dot it down but still read lift bites as well. Right let's move down now. So let's go all the way down to the business end. So I've got uh, a sliding olivet here. Basically the reason why I'm sliding it rather than fixing it is it minimizes resistance. If you think about it, the skimmer's on the bottom, it picks up your bait and the line's running through the olivet to your float rather than actually feeling the weight of the olivet more with a fixed olivet and that's why it's running. So all I've got is two number eight stops with that running. Now below the olivet I've got uh, five number eights, spread number eights, and today what I've been doing a lot of recently is bulking. So I've been bulking all my number eights right down next to the hook because when the sun was out and was shining, basically that I'm fishing at eight inches over depth. So nearly a float length over depth. So that bulk, if you think about it, is just off the bottom. The skimmers are picking up my hook bait and the float's lifting straight out of the water. It magnifies your, your lift bites by using a, what we call a, dub, a double bulk. However, now it's gone overcast, I've changed my shotting pattern slightly and I've spread it and spreading it has just worked slightly better. So basically all I've got is a sliding olivet, five number eights, which allows me to either spread them or bolt them together and then down loop to loop to an eight inch hook length. And I'm using Shimano Aspar Silk Shot 010 to a Tubertini Series 18, but in a 16. Now, it sounds quite a small hook, but a Tubertini Series 18 is quite a big hook. So it's actually like a 14. And that allows me to fish double maggot, bits of worm, sweet corn, four or five pinkies, but without a doubt today, and it was the other day when I come and did a feature, Double red maggot has been the best bait by far. And to be honest with you, I've absolutely loved it. We've caught loads and loads of fish and I've just really enjoyed it. So, to be honest with you, you couldn't ask for a simpler setup than what I've just shown you. Well, there we have it. A few hours fishing at Downflask, catching all these skimmers. We haven't had a lot of big skimmers, but we've had a fantastic day's fishing. There's over 30 pounds of skimmers here in just a few hours fishing, which goes to show the F1 suite, which I've used, isn't just good for commercials. It's good for every venue where you go. Targeting silvers, carp, F1s, it just works with every species. What a fantastic day's fishing. I've absolutely loved it. So until next time, tight lines. I think I better get these back now.